Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I hope that everyone is doing well. Uh, for many of you, I'm sure winter has finally hit. And to those of you listening uh, south of the equator, enjoy your summertime. But for us up in the northern hemisphere, it is finally getting cold where I live. And uh, nothing was a surefire sign of just how bad the weather is probably going to be than seeing sort of the, um, what they call it, like a dog moon, sort of this glowing halo around the moonlight these last couple of nights with the full moon so i'm in for a great time uh with the cold but one of the things that i quite enjoy during this time of year of course is what we're talking about today which is coffee i figured we'd do something a little fun a little different uh something a little more i don't know pastiche maybe and have a good time with it uh there's already a, a super chat that has me <laughs> um going off about tea and it's kind of funny uh since the kidney transplant tea and i are not the world's best friends like we used to be i used to be quite the treat tea drinker before the transplant but neither here nor there um yeah have orange join you so you can play the part of most restrained extremist for once Ah, eh, um maybe later i know he's about to have kruptos on in a little bit but we're gonna have a good time regardless so uh I thought this was fun. Someone had mentioned I had to I had to bring up the Owen Cyclops uh, image about coffee. So we're going to share that here real quick while we're on the air and have this little conversation. And we're here for some Kino. But yeah, I cast a tasting guide for gas station coffee. And this is just inherently, inherently true. Uh, I do a lot of driving or I used to do a lot of driving at my old job. So I was always on the road going to the various offices and doing X, Y and Z about my life and making sure that you know the, the paperwork was being filled out i had the proper reporting so i would have like once every monday it was literally a weekly thing i would be driving all across where i live you know i would drive across six or seven different counties depending on how traffic was or where the roads were at or which office i needed to visit and it was uh really interesting just to enjoy gas station coffee and, and to sort of do it but when i was in college i also did speech and debate so it was always entertaining to travel to various places and uh taste coffee taste food so anytime i'd visit a different city or some random college town out in the middle of nowhere i'd always come back and tell my parents about like the best restaurant or the the coffee that i drank and things that were good i was always sort of this traveling uh, food critic and reporter places that people had to eat at or dine at and those are the things that i like to do but yeah good afternoon everyone hello meta prime i'm glad to see that you're here uh vingle asks if the tea is harder for on the kidney than coffee uh tea when you're you know putting herbs and hot water and such the medicinal properties of some teas uh do not interact well with the anti-rejection medication so yeah um but we have a lovely little uh slideshow for today and we're gonna we're gonna get into that just now so let me make sure we're here perfect um share this tab instead and slideshow cool so welcome everybody <laughs> uh i get gas station coffee when i don't have coffee at home which is almost never yeah i am a i am a big coffee fan myself this is the one non uh i'd usually just drink water most days and i don't even like cold ice water anymore it's just plain regular filtered water that i quite enjoy and it's a it's a good time but yeah uh we're, we're gonna get into it so i have this list on here it's not a very complete list i just took 10 diner chains and coffee that i drink regularly enough to give you my opinion and we're also gonna have just some travel stories along the way i figured that as the season changes we would all have a good time everyone likes saying their good mornings their gms and group chats we love our little apustayas with coffee and we're going to have just a good time. So on the list for today that we're going to have is Denny's, uh, the diner chain pennies, which I call a rare treat because the places where you have to go to find a pennies diner is really hard to get to. Village Inn, IHOP, Chick-fil-A, Bucky's, Waffle House, Dunkin' Donuts. And then I have two actual coffee brands on here, uh, Stocking Mill Coffee and Burning Bush Coffee Roasters. Um, but yeah, pennies, if you don't know, if you've ever been to like Wyoming or Nebraska or like really, really rural New Mexico, Pennies is this like diner chain where you take like old style, like metal sheen trailers and it's just like a diner built into them. And they're really pretty and really wonderful. No Starbucks, no, no, I, I, I don't go to Starbucks. Uh, I'm not, if I'm going to go waste money, I will go just waste my money elsewhere. Um, Starbucks is not on the list. I actually don't drink Starbucks coffee at all. 
but we're going to just get into it. So here's our little judgment criteria. I've got the Owen Cyclops image again. Uh, we're talking about like taste, uh, kick, and texture. And it's going to be, I have like my two experiences with all these coffees, of course, is drinking in black and then blink drinking it with milk or cream and sugar. Um, personal stories and silly experiences will shape the rankings. Um, and also our good friend Charlemagne has an article on coffee drinking uh, on the Old Glory Club. It's literally called Covefe. So if you're interested, by all means, go to the OGC Substack, the oldgloryclub.substack.com. And you can read Charlemagne's article this Friday. I'm going to have a movie review out over there on the OGC. I'm reviewing The Song of the South, 1946. And uh, the more I look at that movie, the more I don't have childhood fondness for, for good old Uncle Remus, as I maybe once did. But that's a story for a later time. But uh, chats, you will be just as much a main character in today's rankings as the rest of you all are. And if you want to ask any questions or tell me why I'm wrong, uh, I would recommend that you use the link via Entropy rather than YouTube Super Chats. I don't think you want to give Raja Mohan any of your money. So um, Entropy takes a smaller cut and it helps me out more just because those guys are really good and they help make sure that people who are have been canceled or demonetized have a way to get access to uh patronage so by all means entropy is the preferred way to do these things but we're going to start off i want to thank mr luthemplar who did all of the uh ai prompting for these images um you're, you'll see them i fell in love with them they're great i know that that opens a whole can of worms over ai prompted imagery but uh for the sake of what i'm doing today i thought that they were pretty good so we're just going to start off today uh with ihop coffee um, I should have used the other one that he has where it's like a frog sitting in the IHOP diner and he's got the little newspaper out and it says like Trump indicted for the six gorillionth time. And I, I really do like that image a lot. Um, I might find it on Twitter just so I can share it with you all because it's actually really funny and really good. But yeah, it's we'll just start with it there. Uh, IHOP coffee is one of those like really awful things. It's probably the worst part about that restaurant. Is, is that it's watery, it's weak and metallic. I mean, they're kind enough to leave you the tiny little pitcher where you can dispense more while they go tend to their other, uh, you know, restaurant patrons. But it's not great. It's it's watery. It's you're gonna drink. You know, it's basically water. You know, it, it's not it's not very good. Um, but at least they leave you the pitcher because the cups at IHOP are incredibly small. You will finish your coffee very quickly. Um, but I go there pretty often as well, I, I used to go there often um, when I lived when I was in university, it was either really IHOP Denny's or Village Inn because those were relatively affordable places that I could go to with my friends and we could drink the and enjoy uh, a cheap burger or cheap meal and talk about our lives and what we were doing or studying and things like that matter. And it was really enjoyable just because when you're a young guy and you're you know, you're working either a full time or a part time job and going to university you know, you appreciate the little things in life. I wasn't a really big drinker. I mean, it wasn't really until my senior year of college did I really start drinking more heavily or regularly, I should say. And that's when I got into playing pool and there was a billiards bar that I was a regular at and I would end up like going there almost every day after work just to like blow off steam for an hour and a half before going home back to my apartment. And it was a point where like they knew my drink order and everything. But IHOP was the place you would go to with friends and um those were the, when they started adding burgers that's again when ihop started getting interesting but the food is better than the coffee the coffee is what weak it's watery it's metallic tasting it's uh it's basically water with just a hint of brown in it it's not that great um you might as well throw cream and sugar on it it's a modest improvement you'll drink it faster um and it's an appetizer in and of itself because you're just ready to get on with the actual food that you came for and they're usually pretty quick about it ihop service isn't particularly bad but i guess that just depends on the neighborhood and where you're going not a fun time for everybody i totally understand i respect that um but yeah uh ihop is a place where i've spent quite a few hours of my younger life as a younger man the same with the uh, village inn and denny's which we'll get into uh later on this list but ihop is you're you're there for the food and you're there because it's open on like a Sunday and you're like getting out of church or whatever, or it's late at night and you're you're meeting with a friend or something like that. You know, it's a it's a place that you go to for breakfast food and the pancakes aren't half bad. 
drinking coffee right now. It all works out. Um, the next one. So the Village Inn. I, this has probably the biggest nostalgia factor for me. Uh, when I moved to where I live now, I was really disappointed to find out that Village Inn only exists in El Paso County, Texas, in regards to its like strength as a restaurant chain and where it exists in sort of the state of Texas. Although I think they even changed the names in El Paso County. I haven't checked. It's been a long time. It's been years since I've lived in El Paso anyway. But there was one right next to the college there. And I had spent really an unhealthy amount of time there as well. I mean, you had free pie Wednesdays, which was great. Um, although for us in El Paso, it was only in October. And then if you go to places like Wyoming, free pie Wednesday is every Wednesday as a way to sort of drum up business, which is fantastic. Uh, but if you're going to drink it black, you know, it's slightly stronger than IHOP. It's not very tough on the stomach. So if you're someone who's like sensitive to acidity or if you have reflux or something, you know, don't worry. It's you're going to be fine. Um, this stuff is not very tough on the stomach. It has sort of a metallic taste to it. It's kind of got that like copper wire kind of like when you taste blood type deal. But it's very oily as well. It's kind of like black ink and water and you can see how it shimmers and shines. So it's it's kind of thick. It's got a sharp metal taste to it, but it's not particularly bad. I would recommend that you drink it with sugar. You don't need cream in it at all. And when they do, you know, your choices are always half and half or vanilla. Uh, I always go with vanilla anyways, if I'm going to add flavor to it. Uh, it's the same as IHOP really, but it does go great with the pie. Um, we are a Twin Peaks appreciators here. We're, we're all here for a damn fine cup of coffee and a clean room that's reasonably priced with good service. So that's something that I actually want to do with last things is to talk about David Lynch's Twin Peaks. I have an undying love for, for that universe, but we're going to get into it. I don't like the sound of that taste. Does Village Inn still exist? That's a really great question. I'm now looking it up because I'm going to be like really disappointed if Village Inn doesn't exist anymore. Nope, it's still around. So like we're good. Um, let's see here. Uh, Village Inn was sold to... Uh, Famous Dave's. I mean, they, they had bankruptcy, but they're still around. Uh, they're in St. Augustine and in Florida. But yeah, I know that they've, they've had a long history of um, updating things and so on and so forth. But no, I mean, they're they're still around, although not as often as they used to. Um, they're pretty much all gone in New Mexico. So everything in Albuquerque, I think there's still one left in Las Cruces. And then I think all of a sudden they've changed the names for them because they're all franchisees. So at this point in time, you can just go out of your way and, and do what you want. But uh, Village Inn is now owned by BBQ Holdings, the parent company of Famous Dave's chain of uh, hit barbecue restaurants. Again, like these are these little kid like it's strange because I, for one, love a hole in a wall kind of diner or restaurant. And the thing about these things is, is that I patron a small hole in the wall diner that I quite love. Um, that's not too far from where my church is, but I don't, I'm not going to say it. Obviously I'm not geographically doxing myself, but I like that place a lot. And the coffee is, it's not great, but it's not bad either, but you're there for the food and you're there for customer service. And you're there for the fact that it's small business and it's ran by actual people. It's not ran by a chain or a holding it's ran by, this lovely old widow who has worked her ass off to basically buy an old IHOP building and turned it into a diner of her own. And she's done a really good job with it. The staff there are wonderful. I like going there. Although there's this, uh, there's this waitress there who kind of knows me to a point where I think I'm a regular at this point. But when I go there, she always hits me in what I always associate with the sort of disabled seating because it's smaller. It makes room for like wheelchaired individuals or whatever. But it's basically a booth for a single person. And so I get stuck in like the singles corner. It's almost like it's it's almost a literally me moment. Right, guys? It's fantastic. But uh, you, you want to patron the smaller chains. And in, in the, you know, when you're growing up, especially in the, you know, late 2010s and, uh, you know, you graduate college and uh, I, I graduated college in 2018. I mean, you, you cling to this sort of third place. You know, we can talk about bowling alone. We can talk about Robert Putnam. But like the diner was, for a great instance, a place where one could be a regular, especially if you aren't a bar going guy, you know. The, the diner doesn't have to be the place where everybody knows your name, but it's the place where you can go where things are the same 
and you can take a load off and you can enjoy, you know, eggs and hash browns and sausage or something like that. And it's not going to kill you. And it's a place that you can go to and enjoy sort of the sense of familiarity that there is a crappy world outside, but inside the walls of this diner, life's pretty good and life is doing just fine. And it's a hard thing to find nowadays, especially since COVID and especially since virtually a lot of people have just decided to not go out anymore. Like the destruction of the third place was already talked about prior to COVID, but now it's really hard to find outside of, you know, uh, already existing friend groups, gaming groups, runners, gun clubs, fishing clubs. I, I mean, every hobby's got people that are willing to go out and do things, but you notice that we expect more out of our technology to make up for our relationships. And I think that this, again, has been a big through line throughout of all of the content I've made about exploring social ecologies on the internet or digital deracination, because, you know, if you don't look outside your window, if you don't see, oh, there's a diner here. Or, oh, there's a bar here. Oh, there's like a, you know, a billiards place here. You lose out on these opportunities to, to have a healthy social life. And when you look at the, the stats on Generation Z, and I can only imagine how bad Gen Alpha is going to be about socialization. You know, we're, we're sort of in this post-literate world <laughs> where uh, no one knows what it means to connect with anyone anymore outside of it looking in a transactional lens. And these kind of diners are, in a way, they're this sort of, uh, they're a time machine in some respect, you know. When things were locally owned, you have that semblance that this was a, even if it's a large chain restaurant like Village Inn or Denny's or IHOP or whatever, there's still a semblance of Americana and familiarity, even if you weren't alive when these things were locally owned small businesses by mom and pop shops, there's still a simulacra of what used to be. And I guess people are clinging on to that, and I am to some extent, but uh there's a diner I actually patron. I don't go to these places very often unless someone asks or I'm with family. But we'll 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 carry on to the the next slide. But these are the things that I think about when I was when I was doing these notes and thinking about these things to talk about. I had spent so many, you know, hours at a village inn on afternoons and evenings after class just drinking coffee and taking notes out of my textbooks, doing outlines, um, prepping reports, because you know, they they finally were putting in uh in the booths, you know, you had a place to plug in uh, an outlet so you could get your laptop charged or your phone charged while you were writing or listening to a lecture that you had recorded from earlier that day. I mean, I barely passed Latin um, and I only did it because I recorded the lectures from my professor who was a real hard ass. And I, I did what I absolutely needed to do to, to make it work. And, you know, Village Inn was a great place to do that. Nothing about really, you know, greasy hash browns and a slice of lemon pie and, and, metallic coffee that'll do it for you but again these are the the things that i think about when nostalgia rolls in not so much that i feel good about it or like oh remember this it's more like yeah that was my life and that's a pretty good life so far i've had uh but the next one chick-fil-a you come for the customer service where they ask you for your name they say god bless you and have a blessed day and uh the people that run the <laughs> the customer the the line over at Chick-fil-A is the, the running gag that I see. I'm like, my mom will share Facebook posts with me and I don't have a Facebook account or any like normie social media with my real name, but it's, uh, you know, she'd be like, Oh, the people that run Chick-fil-A should run the government. And it's just like, you wish, right. You know, a, a smooth, efficient lines, um, you know, the slightly weird Christian overtone or undertone, I should say, and relatively good food. But yeah, so you come for the customer surface. Uh, drinking it black, it's pretty darn sharp. It's pretty acidic, uh, more than the previous two entries. But this is this coffee always comes hot to where you know it's going to stay warm for a really long time. I don't know if, about you, but I I wait a second or two to let it cool. That way, I'm not scalding the back of my or the roof of my mouth as soon as I drink coffee. I I'm like this with any hot beverage or meal. It's just, I'm going to wait a hot second before I decide to scald myself. And then you have that weird scalding sensation in the roof of your mouth and your tongue for like the rest of the day. Not a good time, right? No one, no one wants that. You, you don't want to enjoy that. But um, yeah, literally the, the Chick-fil-A coffee will definitely keep you warm. Um, and it's 
one that would probably very much burn you like the infamous McDonald's incident. But uh, it's a very sharp taste. It's uh, it's slightly metallic, but it's also way more acidic than the other two. Like if you have this on an empty stomach, you're going to feel it in the pit of your stomach. But uh, again, you know, it's it's the experience of going to what would often. And I, honestly, I don't like it when people say this. I think that there's this weird cultural culture war affectation to chick-fil-a even though like during 2020 you had like the ceo of chick-fil-a do the whole black lives matter thing but they had, they're always hated by progressives because like oh you know the 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 people that run chick-fil-a they donated to like focus on the family or whatever they're anti-gay they're anti-lgbt and it's just i wish every company was like like that to some extent but we all know that a one small time donation doesn't lead up for the fact that they have cultural shibboleths that they have to bow down to although it's very funny when i was in uh college i was dating uh a, a young woman who was a, a very ardent progressive very progressive i mean uh she voted for bernie sanders and elizabeth warren like she she wrote in their names for the 2016 election because she hated hillary clinton that much but um don't don't ask me how how this all happened i'm not telling that story but anyway, she was like anti Chick Fil A for the longest time, and uh, one time we were out on a conference trip for university, and I I just told her I said you're eating the you're eating the chick you're eating the chicken just eat the Chick Fil A like this is what's here this is what's open you can put your politics aside no you know quote unquote no ethical consumption under capitalism you can give me that bullshit later eat your fucking chicken. Um, <laughs> Anyways, uh, long story short, uh, God's chicken prevails, right? And uh, she's now a Chick-fil-A fan, even though she and I are not together anymore. It's kind of funny to think about how uh, people's opinions change once there's a modicum of, of decent food and service that comes into one's uh, life. But no, I mean, this is the kind of coffee that I would get all the time at my old job when I was driving pretty often every Monday because like, oh, I could you know, get into the company van, I would, you know, drive around, I'd stop on my way here before getting on like one of the major uh, highways. And uh, I'd pick up uh, Chick-fil-A coffee alongside uh, basically the Chick-fil-A equivalent of a sausage, egg and cheese McGriddle. Uh, although it was a biscuit and with some tater tots. And I don't know, it was it was great. It was great. And that coffee could last you for like an hour of the drive. So it'd be like, all right, I'm leaving the office that takes about 30 minutes to get to where I'm at then another hour or so before I'm where I'm going. So that coffee would last me the whole hour and, you know, it'll sit in your stomach. Uh, cream and sugar, you know, if a uh, little, let you know, a little effect, it'll affect you less with respects to um, that pit in your stomach. Uh, and if you ever go order coffee at Chick-fil-A, it's always going to be the, uh, they'll give you the cream and sugar individually. Like they won't put it in for you. Right. So, you know, they'll, they'll just throw it in the bag. Here's your cream. Here's your sugar. I usually have one cream, one sugar with this. It does take the bitter out slightly, but that sugar is going to have little to no effect, which is fine, right? Um, which tells you that the coffee is strong and it's relatively decent. But, uh, I mean, if you're going to order coffee at Chick-fil-A, go order it with food and you'll have a good time. But, yeah. Uh, so you Chick-pilled the Chick. I, I Chick-fil-A pilled the Chick, yeah. I got to lambast this uh, cult of authenticity stuff. Yeah, you know. <clears throat> yeah, this is a different stream than usual, guys. This is fine. Uh, oh, man, there's so many tea drinkers in here. <laughs> you can say art ho, but she wasn't an art ho. That's the difference, Britt Taylor. Um, she wasn't an art ho. With respects, though, to, like, the tea drinkers in here, I respect tea drinking. I like tea. I don't have a problem with it. As a as an American, and more importantly, as a Texan, it's uh, something that I certainly appreciate uh, in terms of iced and sweet tea. But since the transplant, I always feel bad because I, I, used, to love, I used to love tea a lot. But most of the tea that I usually would drink when I was younger, I can't drink anymore because the certain types of tea like chamomile and peppermint and such will uh, affect my uh, anti-rejection medication. So I would always feel bad during my catechism where I would go over to a friend's place and his wife was kind enough to make the make tea for all of the guests. And I could never say yes to her. I always felt bad. Um, but yeah, uh, <laughs> it's okay. I'll keep drinking that garbage. That's me with IHOP coffee. Anytime I'm at a diner 
or if the coffee's bad, I'm just gonna suck it up and keep drinking. Like I don't, I don't matter. I'm gonna keep drinking that uh, garbage anyway. But yeah, uh, though coffee is like brutalist architecture. Um, not all brutalism's bad. There, there's my hot take for today. Not all brutalism is bad. Some brutalism makes sense, and it kind of fits for where the location of where it's being built. I think brutalist architecture in prison totally fitting. That should not be a welcoming place to you. You should be there to be in prison. Although I'm more H.L. Mencken pilled on prison, but um, you know, not all coffee, not all coffee is bad, and not all tea is bad either. I like both. I just can't drink. I can only drink coffee now more than the other. Yeah, no, this is very true. You got to be aware of plastic bags and microplastics. And yeah, Ren does have a really good uh, non-plastic tea bag line. So I would really recommend that. Um, although you should also do loose leaf if you do your tea. But we're going to carry on. Oh, man. <sighs> Scribe is asking about HEB. I don't live in a place in Texas where there's HEBs. I'm, I'm that far out in BFE. Um, <laughs> I live in BFE, man. So, uh, there, I'd have to drive over an hour to get to an HEB in my area. Um, if the coffee is too bitter, you can always add a pinch of salt. I've actually liked black coffee where they'll do the, the salted butter. They'll put a little bit of that in their coffee to thicken it up. And it's actually really good. I'm actually, I highly recommend the, uh, the salted bit of coffee pinch and, or salted butter pinch into your coffee. I'm, I'm definitely, definitely recommend that. You do live in HEB land and it's very bougie. I believe it. Yeah, I live out, I live out in the sticks. So HEB to me is not something that I'm familiar with. I, I presume it's the Texas equivalent of a Trader Joe's and Trader Joe's makes you feel bougie, even though you're getting some really overpriced crap. <laughs> and yes, Bucky's is on my list, although I don't live anywhere near a Bucky's either. Uh, Alabama is beautiful, New Gloff. I recommend that anyone who's visiting the South should. I'll I'll tell you a driving story, New Gloff, and I'll, I'll I'll before we get on to the next slide. Uh, over the course last year, last uh, last fall, so it's really been a year. Good Lord, I had the I took an opportunity and I drove to to see some friends. I drove all the way from where I live to the East Coast, so I drove to. To, to, to Texas or not, from Texas all the way to Georgia. And uh, I drove through the entirety of the South. So, I mean, you know, you're, you're driving through Louisiana, you're, you're driving through Mississippi, Alabama, and you get to Georgia and you're there to the East coast and you're crossing, of course, the, the, tri the time, time zones. But I mean, you're driving through and you see these most beautiful lush green places. I was driving through the midst of some really heavy rain through a national park. And it was really just, it was something else, you know, and even there, right? Like there's still a, like you were driving through these states and you recognize that you were in a place that still had an identity that wasn't just corporate America identity. It wasn't just the current thing of the Beltway or the world of Washington. And honest to God, there's something that I really do love about that. And, and also, you know, the still, there was a high number of Confederate flags. And it was this weird, awkward place that people just got along and kind of got it. And it was funny because I didn't know that Bucky's had expanded as far out as it did. So I was stopping for gas. Uh, I was thinking about, oh, I need to stop for gas somewhere. I need to go do X, Y, and Z. And then, bam! All of a sudden, I see this. I see the beaver, you know, of of Bucky's. And it was like, oh, I'm home, you know, I'm home. And that's pretty good. Um, so it's it was it was really entertaining to learn that there was a, a Bucky's in Leeds, Alabama, this huge mega store gas station. And I was like, ah, I'm home. That that semblance of, you know, live, laugh, love nationalism of white identity was there. It was kind of funny. Um, but John Slaughter, I totally understand if you need everyone to think that Alabama is a racist backwater, you know, hellhole that people don't go to. Uh, Bucky said no to truckies. That's so true. They, they don't. Uh, you do need to you do need to go to a Bucky's though, New Gloff. I highly recommend it because it's, you know how I, I know this is probably a really bad. I, well, no, I think it's a fair comparison. It's just an edgy thing to recite, I guess. But like, have you ever read those old Countercurrents articles about like Pizza Hut and like the 1990s and how things felt safe and comfortable and cozy? Basically, take that vibe and put it into a Bucky's gas station, and you'll go. Uh, you'll go inside, and I mean, like, there's stuff that you can buy for, you know, 
shirts and and sort of trinkets and things but also like you have things that you would see in any sort of like white woman's home where it's like the live laugh love stuff these sort of like novelty stuff yeah it's comfort slop i don't care if it's comfort slop though it's it's not bad in comparison to most quick trips and stuff like that right or or come and go if you live in parts of the west um, but Bucky's is great because, you know, you can get there and clean the cleanest bathrooms. It's literally the Chick-fil-A of gas stations. This is how I compare it. It's the Chick-fil-A of gas stations. You're there having a good time. You're there enjoying yourself. You can get a really great sandwich for a low price. And uh, I have Bucky's coffee on this list as well, both the gas station, but also the coffee grounds that you can buy. And so, but it's a high trust environment. I've never seen uh a a magic american event play out there so i mean Buc bucky's is pretty good and so i would recommend that so yeah i was just driving through the south it was a lovely time on my way to georgia and yeah just to see a bucky sign in leeds alabama was actually like a real big surprise to me it was like oh i'm home and maybe i'm just as much of a, a product of my own kind of um sort of nostalgia or coziness for the world uh, is Pizza Hut extinct now? No, Pizza Hut isn't extinct, but it is not the it is not the Pizza Hut that used to be. The QT where I live got robbed the other day. Oh, good lord! I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, Bucky's hasn't fallen yet. Although earlier this year in June, I saw a local because I know I know uh, Cracker Barrel has franchisees, but Cracker Barrel had some Facebook post about gay pride or whatever. And I was, I just felt like my heart sink, you know, because there's the whole little Murdoch, Murdoch that was like Cracker Barrel, the last implicit stand of white identity or whatever. And it's, it is just really funny. And it's like, oh no, the Cracker Barrel's talking about Gay Pride Month. It's over. They're on the sodomy liturgical calendar. It's, it's over. It's over. But so far, I mean, uh, Cracker Barrel is the place where boomers have lunch together, and the, um, it's great. I'm not shitting on Cracker Barrel. I'm just really upset that this June of 2023, during Sodomy Pride Month, there was a uh, Cracker Barrel celebrating uh, sodomy, and I was not a fan. So the the Bucky's brisket index, although the Bucky's brisket index is a little more expensive, um, but we'll, we'll we'll carry on. <laughs> um, what are we on? We're only on number three of ten. Uh, Waffle House, you come for the food, you leave there sober. Uh, I feel like everyone has in America at least one kind of Waffle House story. America has the infamous Waffle House Index, where it gauges how quickly Americans respond to uh, natural disasters. And it's a really interesting thing. Uh, Waffle House Index, if you want to look that up. And I will, I'll just read it out. It is a metric named after the southern uh, restaurant chain Waffle House, known for its 24-hour, 365-day-a-year service. Since the restaurant always remains open, and it gives rise to an informal but useful metric to determine the severity of a storm and the likely scale of assistance required for disaster recovery. It was originally coined by former uh, FEMA administrator Craig uh, Fugate, um, and it's usually to inform um, how bad or how good a Waffle House is. So, for instance, you know, if the full menu is up, the storm is not that bad. The restaurant's got power. If it's a limited menu, power's absent or delivered by a generator, food supplies are running low. Red usually means that, hey, uh, Waffle House is closed. And that's when, you know, shit hit the fan. But yeah, so America's got uh, its own disaster response informal index about Waffle House. And I'm sure everyone, of course, has had their fun this year with the whole Waffle House Wendy bit and how many violent, magical events play out at a Waffle House. But I mean, if you're if you're in a in a good location, uh, the Waffle House is fantastic. Uh, so yeah, we're, we're, at, we're at Waffle House. Yeah. And uh, Cringe Walker made these. Yes, these are A.I. And I know that opens a whole can of worms about all that stuff. But uh, I, I told Cringe Walker I was doing this. He was kind enough to make them for me in my Telegram chat. I'm not going to have a problem with them. Uh, they're more artistic than anything I could ever make. And I can't do this. So a bunch of frogs drinking coffee. I'm not going to be mad. Have I ever eaten at a Shoney's? No, I have not. I'm now looking this up. I wonder if there's one near me. Um, let's see here. Uh, let's use, uh, let's go. I'm, I'm, you're not going to see me do this in, in, in the tab, but, uh, we're going to just go zoom in. Uh, the nearest Shoney's for me is like 
nearly three hours away. So no, I've never been to a Shoney's. I presume that this is more of a a South kind of deal, mainly in like what Tennessee, right? But no, I've never been. But I've been told it's good. Um, yes, uh, the 24 hour restaurant is the perpetual sea of the unknown. I don't know who did that thread new gloss, but I'm pretty sure it's uh, I've, I've heard it's good. As long as the Shoney's isn't in New Orleans, you're fine. Well, I've actually never been to New Orleans, so I don't think I'll have to worry about that. And just like that, everything is now public domain. So true. You finally got a Waffle House in San Antonio. Well, San Antonio is I. It's like if it's like if you made put a facelift on El Paso. It's a military town, incredibly Hispanic, but uh, San Antonio is just nicer. <laughs> um. Yeah, it's Lou Templar, but I, I've known him forever as Cringe Walker. It's really bad. Um, Shoney's is a Texas place. Mate. Well, I'm not. Well, I don't live in South Texas, so. Um, but I, a quick map for me showed me locations of Shoney's all over uh, in Tennessee and Oklahoma. Howdy, Ernst. Uh, God bless you, man. Uh, I hope that you're staying safe and doing well in Geneva. If you haven't been following what Conscious Caracol's been doing with respects to. Uh, reporting on Afri Forum and their blatant anti-boar and just racism of the ANC uh, in South Africa at the UN. Um, be sure to follow him and his work. God bless him. And I wish you all the best. Uh, and here I am streaming about coffee and I have friends and people I talk to regularly that are doing good and important work. Um, so drop that man a subscribe. Uh, if you're, if you're not following him, go follow him on Twitter. He's a good man. Um, and congratulations, of course, to, everything that you've been doing and may God protect you. But yeah, so on, on to waffle house, you, you come for the food, you leave there sober. Uh, you just, you're, you're there really to sober up and things like that and enjoy yourself. Uh, it's also really strong coffee. I don't care what part of the day it is, or if it's two o'clock in the morning or 8 AM, that coffee is going to kick in like a sack of bricks and it's oily but very sharp. It's not too oily. It's not like uh, Village Inn coffee. It's going to be doing exactly what you needed to do, which is to wake your ass up and to do exactly what you need to do. And uh, I just I just checked Twitter for two seconds. And uh, our friend Mike of Pole says he's listening from inside of your ceiling. Apparently he's doing some electrical work right now and things like that. Uh yeah, I know San Antonio isn't a desert. You're a short distance from the from the Gulf Coast. I've been to San Antonio multiple times. I like the place. It's just uh, a, a nice a nice uh, nice way to compare the two, I guess. Uh, wake your ass up in preparation for what? I don't know. Work, um, sobering up. You know, I when I was because I used to drink uh, rather socially and maybe liberally and, and I'm kind of glad I can't drink anymore. It's more, I, maybe I'm afraid I would have had a problem, but like, you know, if you wanted to sober up, you would eat some really shitty food and you would go drink a lot of coffee and you'd be fine and try to avoid a hangover. But, and it's funny because Whataburger is such a big thing in Texas that like, if you lived in El Paso, right, the cops would take, like they would moonlight guarding the Whataburgers because every like once 2 a.m. clicked in, right? And the bars were closed, closing time, you know, last call for alcohol. So finish your whiskey and beer. All of a sudden you would be uh, off to go to Whataburger and to sober up and to get your like double meat Whataburger with cheese and large onion rings and a chocolate shake, you know, and that'll be like $13 and 85 cents. And all of a sudden, um, you know, there, there'd be a, just a ton of cops there, you know, just a lot of police officers there making sure no one got too rowdy and no one was drinking and driving very heavily guarded. That's that this was how you knew the Whataburger was a safe place, no matter how wasted your friends got, because, <laughs> you know, there'd be a cop there. Um, and Whataburger is a ridiculous name. Ben. Oh, the, see, the Scandinavian mind cannot comprehend the the. Oh, the great state of Texas and the Whataburger. I'm so sorry. Gas station behavior. Yeah, it's so true. New cloth. <laughs> it is gas station behavior. It's that it's that edgy 7-Eleven behavior that no one wants to talk about. <laughs> but yeah, so I mean, very, very sharp, uh, very sharp coffee. Um, and it would either be kind of uh kind of woody 
but also really sharp. I mean, you're going to have that taste in your mouth where it feels like you've been eating some kind of coinage, but at the same time, um, it feels very like thick or, or kind of, uh, there's a texture to it. Also, there's always a lot of coffee grounds in your cup of coffee there. Not a, not a good time. <laughs> uh, I'm not even going to try and pronounce any of the thing that's being said in a foreign language here, but that's, that's great. That's great. Thank you, uh, Herlock Sholmes. I appreciate it. That nostalgic coinage taste. Imagine having a cig at 3 a.m. and a burger joint with a coffee. Uh, well, there are places where you can do that. Um, and there are many a times where I have had a cigarette with a, a cup of coffee and a burger in my hand outside of a Whataburger at like 3 a.m. in the morning. It's been great. You know, those are those are young. Um, those are those are a good time. Yeah, you just can't do it indoors. Although I think Oklahoma still allows you to smoke indoors in some places. I think that if you have, you have to pay extra, but you can do it. In Texas, they did the whole public uh, smoke ban, which is stupid. And now we're uh, at least we're not at least we're not Britain. That's all I can say. At least we're not Britain. We haven't banned tobacco entirely. We just made, you know, we just made menthols. We just banned menthols for all of a sudden, you know, like we're, we're doing the uh, what's the word I'm looking for? We, the Biden administration, you know, the most anti-black administration ever. They banned menthols. You know, what are all where are all those dads going to go to buy cigarettes? Where are all those dads going to go? The stupid AI doesn't know how to set the table. Yeah, well, it ain't perfect. Can uh, can a square peg fit into a round hole? Well, if that square peg is a Whataburger's new patty melt and that round hole is your kisser, you bet. Whataburger, just like you like it. Oh man, look at that. We've got we've got advertising all over the place. I don't know. Waffle House is not very high on my list, but it is better than IHOP and Village Inn in regards to the strength of coffee. We are just judging on coffee, but you're there for the sobriety. I'm giving you all way too many stories about how awful I've been in my previous life. <laughs> but then again, I'm only human. Lord have mercy. All right, Denny's. Uh, I'm, I'm permanently reminded of the the vine of those like little teenage kids having a band. And he's just like, what the fuck is up Denny's? And he's like 14 years old. Uh, never gets old. I'm, it always makes me laugh. It's, it's great. But anyways, uh, Denny's is one of these places where, uh, growing when I was, you know, in high school, when I'm, when I came back to the United States, I was finishing high school and there was a Denny's that was about like 10 minutes from me, uh, down the road from where I lived. And, uh, it was just this place where you could spend your money and have a great time. And I feel like everyone on right wing Twitter has a fun time with any way where they do the like Lord of the Rings or the Hobbits breakfast menu and stuff like that. There's a really great edit out there of it. It's fantastic. But, uh, it's weaker. It's, it's a weak cup of coffee, but it's stronger than stronger than IHOP, stronger than Village Inn. And uh, Denny's was definitely my high school spot with many of my friends because my best friend in high school, uh, he and I lived about a few minutes from each other. But any time that we were out in college or any time that we were out doing the uh, out, out at a game store or whatever, and we wanted to just kill time and we didn't want to go to a bar, but we hadn't eaten anything all day. You know, you'd go to a Denny's and you'd order a cup of coffee and a glass of water and then you would order, you know, um, a burger or the super bird or you'd get you know waffles and or chicken and waffles or pancakes or whatever but you know denny's had a, a great variety to its menu and you'd even order spaghetti there which i would not recommend like whatever spaghetti that they're serving up at denny's is um it, it's like hospital food like you know you're just not going to eat that go go eat go eat a breakfast meal but um their western burger was was solid um, what do you mean I didn't get breakfast at Denny's? I, I don't think I ever really ate breakfast food at Denny's. They're, uh, Denny's is king. Absolutely. Denny's is king. Although I will give, I will give IHOP credit. IHOP does pe Pepsi products. So if you're, a, if you're a Mountain Dew guy, you know, if you're a Pepsi guy, IHOP is your, is your place. But if you're more of a like malts, shakes and Coca-Cola products kind of person, you, you go to Denny's, you know, and you have a good time with that. But, uh. You can't go wrong with a grand slam. That's so true. You you really can't. Um, you can't. But if you're gonna do the do, you can just go to IHOP. This is what you have to do. 
Yeah, their Western burger is pretty good. Their Grand Slam is great. I actually really like their Super Bird with fries, and you can just throw in a little bit of extra salt on it because their Super Bird was like a bunch of like turkey and chicken. It was basically just a, a glorified grilled turkey sandwich with cheese, but it was like disgustingly greasy and cheesy, and it was wonderful. Um, although I don't think any of these places are, are 24 hours anymore. I don't think any any of these places are anymore. Not even IHOP isn't. These places used to be where you could go to do exactly what you needed to do, which was uh, at any hour, at any point in time. But COVID killed all this. COVID killed the American diner experience where you and your friends in university and college or, or, or high school could waste, you know, 12 hours at a restaurant. I remember when I turned, this is another another fun, I know, too much gas station behavior or, or that or they just don't have the service anymore. COVID just killed staffing. People don't want to work these jobs and I, and I don't blame them. It's bad. What would be the dialectical opposite of slop? A, a good meal, I guess. I don't know, NG Benji. That's a good question. Um, the dialectical opposite of slop. Uh, well, I guess the opposite of slop would just be, you know, a meal. I mean, like, because what what is slop other than like something quick, fast, greasy, and easy? <laughs> Much like your mother. But um, it, it's more like it's just it's there and it's also kitsch in its own respects right you know like the slop is kitsch but fine dining is the opposite of of slop you know well built a delicacy the opposite would be a frog that's true uh synthetic street drugs also killed 24 hour establishments covid was just the nail in the coffin I guess I just never, maybe this is my own, you know, quote unquote privilege showing. Right. But like, I've never, I've, you know, you, there are just places that you avoid, you know, like you avoid the lower Valley at like a three o'clock in the morning. If you lived in El Paso, you know, like you avoided the border highway, you know, although that was pretty guarded and well lit. So you could be fine there, but there were just downtown El Paso. I wouldn't want to be there too late at night, but still, you know, um, I guess synthetic drugs. Yeah. Standardized, low cost on demand products slop. Oh, that's so good. So good, New Gloff. That's really good. I like that. Standardized, low-cost, on-demand products. Slop. Uh, New Gloff, you, you, that's fantastic. Um, you will get credit when I tweet that out. That's really good. Now we have Elden Ring and DoorDash. <laughs> uh, with a burger and a ring. Yeah, there you go. A match made in heaven for Slop. Although I have been gifted Elden Ring. Oh, I think Distributed said that. Won't take credit. Oh, that's even... Oh, still, I'll, I'll give that. Do not give me credit. Okay, no worries. That's still really good from Dave. That's really good. Standard highs, low cost on demand products. Slop. Well done. Uh, Garcon says, I am British and I first got into coffee after visiting a diner in the holiday on, on the US in the holiday at 15. I'm grateful to America for that as I'm not a fan of tea. Well, we, we're coffee drinkers here, good sir. Um, unless, you're, unless you're a Mormon, a, a church of the Latter-day Saints, as they like to call themselves. They are not Mormon drinkers, or they're not coffee drinkers, as per Joseph Smith and their doctrines. But um, I don't believe uh, Mormons are particularly Christian anyway. So I, I always call coffee the, the Christian beverage. Um, Elden Ring doesn't run on my PC from Steam, but it does when pirated, lol. Uh, well, I've been gifted Elden Ring. I should stream that one of these days. I've never played it, and I had somebody <laughs> telling me. Um, he, uh, I had my friend gift it to me. Uh, our friend Hunger the Die Merchant, who's also a patron, he like he he gifted it to me while he was in Lebanon, and I was just like, hey, uh, excuse me, sir, but um, you're like not too far from an active war zone, and you thought that it'd be a cool idea to gift me a video game. Um, so, yeah. Have I ever had chicory coffee? I have chicory coffee every Sunday at my church, and I will get into that when I when I talk about uh, coffee in a little bit. But yes, uh, I am I am a fan of, of coffee with chicory in it. I, I have it every Sunday, and I have it when I make coffee at home um, here as well, and I'll get into that in just a little bit. It's great. I love it. I'm a big fan. I know it's it gets called a New Orleans thing, but it's uh, just as much a New Orleans thing, I guess, as it is. Um, something that happens in the diocese of the South here in, in uh, the Orthodox parts of Texas. It's kind of funny. 
but here we go. We'll carry on. Den- Denny's is great. Uh, I've spent more hours of my young adult life there than I'd like to admit. But if you're going to ask questions or send super chats, I please recommend that you do it by entropy rather than doing it through YouTube. Uh, I want your money to to not be sent over to Google and Rasha Mohan. You deserve better than to, to give that Indian man your money. Um, but we'll carry on. Uh, so this is a rarer one. Pennies, a, a rare treat, as I like to call it. Pennies is one of those places where you can go to... Uh, I can't stand any of the chains. We'll shart. I, I will, you may have missed it, Chandler, but I, we had a long diatribe about the need to patron local stores and local chains. I'm doing this as sort of a way to tell these stories and to sort of have a prairie home companion without all the shit livery. But, you know, this, I, I patron a local diner or I make coffee myself and I host friends. But uh, I'm just sort of telling you stories along the way. We're having, it's cozy today. It's cozy, Chandler. Just come along with the ride. Um. Penny's is sort of a rare or rare instance where if you've been to places like Nebraska or Wyoming or rural New Mexico um, or Utah or Colorado, you can find a, a Penny's restaurant there. You know, it's got the black and white checkered floors. It's got the the polyester seatings. Uh, and, you know, if, you, if you've ever heard of that song Diner, um, I think it was made popular by uh, an episode of Scrubs. But um, it's by Martin Sexton. Which is a, it's a nice song, you know. It's a it's a good time, but yeah, everyone kind of knows that one because it's in an episode of Scrubs. But you know the the chrome and formica tabletops that's very real, and especially in America. And I think Penny's is sort of this excellent example because you have this shining silver chrome outside. You've got the pink reddish neon sign that you know says Penny's Diner, um, or Penny Steakhouse, or, or or Penny's Burgers, and you'll go out there and again, it's very cramped. It's very small, but it's sort of the, the locale of where you want to be and have a good time in, in life like that. But yeah, the food's good. It's got that retro fifties vibe going for you. The coffee itself. Um, I haven't been to one. I've been to one in maybe a year or so ago. Checkered floors. huh? <laughs> um, I am not a Mason. Uh, in fact, I, if I were to join the Masons, I would be giving up my church and my life there. <laughs> so no, uh, no, no, no Masons stuff here. But uh, yeah, no, I mean, it really does go with any breakfast food that you've got there. Although this coffee always tastes burnt, but like you can tell like, oh, this is, this is a little more well done than I'm used to, which again, if you're, if you're used to that, it's fine, but it's got that like black toast kind of taste. You're like, oh, this has been sitting on that heater for way too long, almost as if it's been sitting in that large pot of coffee all day and you're finally just getting what's left over. If you're lucky, you can always ask for like a fresh one, but not for me, not for me, Uh, particularly burnt. So I always add cream and sugar with this one to sort of overcome with it. I usually drink my coffee. um, Usually I drink it black, although a little bit of milk and a little bit of sugar is never going to hurt anybody. But uh, if you're going to have creamer, you might as well have it with some vanilla in it as well. I'm I'm a simple man. You know, if someone offers me a cup of coffee and it has cream and sugar in it, usually I'm not going to complain. Or if I'm going to have cream and sugar in my coffee, I'll, I'm, I'm a very simple, grug-brained kind of guy. You're telling me all I've got is great value, you know, powder, dairy-free, vanilla creamer, and like a little bit of sugar? Yeah, put that shit in. We're going to have a great time. Um, Penny sounds like a lazy Denny's knockoff. Uh, I wouldn't call it a lazy knockoff because those two restaurants are like diametrically opposed opposites. One is a more sloppy, kitchified restaurant chain. And the other one still has this uh, really like, I don't know, it holds on to the simulation or the simulacra, like the, the image, the ghost image of it. You know, I'm, I'm a simple man when it comes to my coffee. I'm very grug brained and I quite appreciate it. You know, uh, Grug Brain likes black coffee, so Grug Brain will drink black coffee. And I didn't. My parents don't drink uh, coffee at all. My grandparents do. So growing up, we never had coffee at all in our in our household. My my mom and dad always kept a small coffee maker with some filters that were like you know a decade <laughs> or, or more old. And it wasn't until I was like a junior in high school that I first had coffee. And like any young man exposed to highly addictive chemicals when he's young, you know, you you just never leave it. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's good stuff. Uh, is it a coincidence that dinner and diner d- differ by one letter? Probably not. Hello. Probably not. Um, 
Perkins is North uh, Northern Protestant. Have I ever eaten at a Perkins? I'm not looking up Perkins. You guys are just telling me all these like places to eat where I go. Uh, Perkins is a casual dining chain breakfast. Um, number of employees, 25,000. Yeah, all over. Oh, look at that. Is there, is there, is there a Perkins near me? No, there's no Perkins near me. It's just showing me a bunch of doctors. Um, yeah, per Perkins over here. Yeah, definitely Perkins restaurant and bakery. Although I look at it and it makes me think of a McAllister's. I think of a McAllister's. But uh, I'm not in the Northeast. <laughs> I like how everyone is describing uh, these restaurants and these chains by what denomination of Christianity they are. Bob Evans is Southern Protestant, so Southern Baptist. Denny's is Jewish. <laughs> Uh, just a quick nine hour drive. I mean, that is true. A lot of these places can't, you know, any drive is a day drive if you're brave enough. Uh, Perkins is Northern Protestant. So like what Episcopal, right? You know, uh, New Glock is just going to tell us exactly what kind of denomination all these uh, diner chains are. Bob Evans is the shit. I have not eaten at a Bob Evans in forever. Is there a Scientology diner? Uh, oh, man. You know, like where all the rich people eat, but you can't do it. Oh, no, it's Lutheran. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I don't know if there's a Scientology diner. If there's a Scientology diner, I've never eaten there. Um, uh, as for as for pennies, uh, the coffee always tastes burnt. Not a lot of grounds inside of your coffee, but it's kind of kind of thin, kind of watery, but it's not that bad. But it's still pretty good. Pizza Planet is the Scientology restaurant. Yeah, because it's, it's, it's fake. IHOP is Catholic. Interesting. 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 See, I'm having a good time with chat. So I, I do feel bad for the audio listeners that will be listening to this on Spotify and Apple Podcasts as we rank through this. Because this really is a video experience. We have a, a slideshow with us today as we go through our, our, our coffee chains today. But um, after pennies, we've got Dunkin' Donuts. America doesn't really run. I mean, ain't that the truth? There is a Scientology cafe in L.A. There you go. <laughs> Uh, what denomination would Starbucks be? Um, whatever Joel Osteen is. So whatever those mega church Joel Osteen prosperity gospel guys are, that's that's what Starbucks is. Um, the podcast cell is being absolutely cucked by the chat. That's so true. Uh, I do not know which one is the is Orthodox. Uh, I couldn't tell you if we were to assign an Orthodox uh, label to any of these of these diner chains. I don't know. I, I wouldn't apply one to it. Although I guess, you know, whichever one offers the the chicory coffee, and I'll tell that story in a hot minute. But yeah, um, Starbucks would be mega church evangelical. So like, you know, John Hagee or whatever his name is, you know, he would be up there with Joel Osteen and others, these sort of like dispensationalist <laughs> global homo mega churches. Uh, do the Orthodox have a conception of leisure and eating out? They have a conception of leisure, but eating, well, it's a very limited one, but like leisure and eating out, probably not. Um, but uh, I mean, as the scriptures tell us and as the fathers, you know, reiterate that, you know, one doesn't have to be in church to have fellowship every time that we're out together and we pray to, and we hang out together as a continuation of our fellowship in Christ. So I think that that's totally fair. Um, what's Dunkin Donuts? Um, whatever the pro it's definitely prosperity gospel, you know, like uh, God wants you to be, you know, fat, jolly and merry. But uh, Dun Dunkin' Donuts, you know, America doesn't really want to run. Uh, healthier than all other options on that menu. Although I'm not going to lie, they're, they have this disgusting beverage that when I was in college, I actually really enjoyed drinking. And I'm, I'm going to look it up because I've not been to a Dunkin' Donuts in over two years. There's just not one near me. So, all right. So I'm loading up the Dunkin' Donuts menu. We're going to block. Doesn't need to know my location. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh frozen drinks oh yeah we're talking about like those awful 1100 calorie you know beverages um their frozen coffee was great i quite liked their frozen coffee and you had uh what, what, what was their flavors i liked the caramel swirl i'm not gonna lie um also the french vanilla was pretty good but also just plain old frozen coffee but yeah calories at a medium 680 if you got a large 870 like the like again, hold on. Um, we're gonna just share this tab real quick so everyone can understand how unhealthy this place is. 
um share share this tab instead okay it doesn't show anything like my location or anything great uh so yeah frozen coffee this is how bad it is this is your frozen coffee an energizing spin on your favorite coffee a large frozen coffee dairy whole milk toasted white chocolate 870 calories un unbelievable unbelievable can't have this you wonder why we're so fat you wonder why it's so bad it's so bad Share this tab instead. So bad. Uh, no, Einstein Bros is the most is the is the Jewish coffee chain. It's, li it's literally it's literally bagels. Yeah, it's a full meal. Yeah, they're sugary drinks or diabetes in a glass. Absolutely, Sean Wyland. Um, I would drink that. Yeah, drinking a large black ice Dunkin' right now, eight calories. Uh, yeah, you would give that to astronauts. So true. Dunkin' Donuts is horrific. I added sugar to one of those drinks thinking they served it straight. Ooh, yeah, no. Even the regular coffee is really sugary. Um, but it'll keep you warm long after you drink it. And it's pretty great. Um. <laughs> so, yeah, literally, if you're going to have a black cup of coffee at Dunkin' Donuts, you are having the healthiest thing on their entire menu. Uh, it's served incredibly, you know, piping hot. Uh, keep you warm like after there. Um, but if you're going to have cream and sugar with your black coffee, you might as well just do it and have the full rush of sugar and caffeine. Um, not worth the price compared to McDonald's. To McDonald's, it's incredibly expensive. Um, oh, man, a Dutch Bros just opened up not too far from me, actually. Uh, a Dutch Bros is uh, Dutch Reformed Neo-Calvinist. There we go. There you go. Dutch Bros is, is, is Dutch Reformed Neo-Calvinist tradition. So that answers your denominational question. Einstein's bro, Einstein Bros is Orthodox Jewish. Also very true. I like how we're just assigning random religious uh, affiliations with the with these places. I'm now going to, to just keep it in mind. Dunkin' Donuts is not great, but it is the healthiest thing on there. And it is... Uh, the donuts aren't bad, but even then, if you're going to go buy donuts, go buy donuts from a local donut shop. Uh, I will reiterate it all the time. You should be patroning small local businesses um what are the bluestone lane uh well the french huguenots right aren't they also calvinists Cause a lot of french huguenots went down south to like south africa and they're they're calvinists it's, it's a very interesting group einstein does have great bagels same with panera uh no nah, well i've never been to, well i've been to einstein bagels but i haven't been to one for a while i do like panera bread i like their soups but it's ridiculously expensive although i like going there um it's my 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 priest really likes panera bread and so i've i've been to panera more times than i care to count um duncan has never made a moist donut throughout its entire history says john smith i haven't been to a duncan in forever so i guess i would have to to go there and try one one donut just one donut to to do this and, and confirm it there's a coffee chain called Bottoms Up that serves you coffee from women in... Oh, no, that's awful. That's awful. Are you, that cannot be real. I, you're, you're just making shit up, Brent Taylor. Oh, no, it's real. Oh, that's so depressing. Oh, no. Oh, that's that's real. Oh, no. That's really bad. Oh, would you look at that? There is one. There is one in. There's one in Dallas. I guess if I wanted to make the drive, but I'm never going to go to that. Why would I go? I I don't understand the appeal of restaurants like that. I don't understand Twin Peaks. I don't understand the appeal of the Hooters. I mean, I get it. You're there for a pretty woman, but I I guess for me, it's just like I don't know. Like I feel like there's, eh, you know, it it's like going to a strip club. If I wanted the same impact of you know seeing a woman that I can't have and can't touch while wasting my money and getting inebriated, I would just get blackout drunk at home, bang my head against a wall, and burn a $100 bill with a lighter. I just don't... I don't get it. Um, and for the Hooters fan with class, well, I guess I'm just not a Hooters fan, you know? Like, I, I'm not, I'm not a, I'm not a fan, you know? There are a lot of porn coffee stores near me. That's really... a porno coffee store. Ugh. Well, like it's and it's bad if you're down in like the Dallas Fort Worth area because like they have the, the the condom sense thing, you know, like common sense, and it's just like, eh, I don't know. I've always not 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 a fan, not a fan, and I'm, 
I'm not I'm not good. I'm I'm, I'm okay not to deal with that. <laughs> I uh, uh the Duncan bakes its donuts. Only the Amish have um manufactured or has them fried. Yeah. Uh, I like my coffee like I like my women fellas. Yeah, I like my I like my coffee and my women the same way. I like them hot and preferably enjoyable to be around and to hold. But anyways, uh, we're not, I, I see where you're going. Hooters is a right, right, is a rite of passage. I'm so disappointed in you. I've been to Hooters. I've been to Twin Peaks. It's just not my cup of tea. Like even when I was not a Christian kind of guy and slept around and was a womanizer, just wasn't my thing. Like if I'm going to do that, I might as well just go to a strip club, you know, not, <laughs> you know, like not my cup of tea, man. Uh, fractured, oh, fractured prune. Okay. We're going to go look that up now. Fractured prune always hot donuts um locations let's see here so there's one oh there's a whole bunch in in maryland apparently block this place does not need to know my location about us fractured prune delicious interactive custom fresh fun colorful and smart looks like a big donut place interesting been a Ocean City, Maryland landmark since 1976. It's been a tradition of many donut lovers far and wide. See, I don't live on the East Coast, so I'm like, I'm never going to go there, right? You know, bring some singles. Uh, here's a thought. He says, hijab restaurants. The servers are all who wear hijabs. You don't focus on the waitress, but the food instead. See, why can't you do... Okay, that would be great in, say, like, London, New Gloff, but why don't you just do it with, like, the night like honestly like the, the million dollar idea would be um like here's here's your million dollar right wing restaurant idea your million dollar right wing restaurant idea is like you get the girl in like the wheat field sundress but she's serving you coffee you know literally if you just made dutch bros but it's like a, a girl in like a dutch sundress like all of the the right wing like sonnenrad edit memes like there you go there's your million dollar idea <laughs> Um, you like your coffee like I like my woman cold and bitter. Uh, well, I, I see you're an iced coffee fan, Joshua. Iced coffee fan. Yeah, it's Rad Wife Ca Cafe. There you go. Uh, Wheatfields Cafe, you know, M made cafes and no tattoos or piercings. So true. But yeah, Dunkin' Donuts is uh, their black coffee is the healthiest thing on the menu. Um, but if you're gonna go, and even then, you don't even need sugar. It's the, it's it's got sugar just built into it. It's not great. Um, not a fan. It is low on my list. And I have the final rankings down at the end. Um, and then last but not least, I have Bucky. Well, it's not, we well, have two more after Bucky's. Uh, it's a ritualistic purchase for me. Um, so you can get gas station coffee there and you can also get, uh, you know, bagged grounds. Uh, I, I put Cafe du Monde alongside my bagged grounds for drinking it black. Anytime that I go visit um, the doctor's office or visit the transplant clinic, which I have to drive a considerable distance away uh, to do so because I live out in BFE. Um, I will always pass by a Bucky's and I always will stop there regardless of whether or not I need to buy anything. It's kind of just a ritual of mine where I'll go there and I'll buy a, a bagged coffee. Maybe I'll buy, you know, something else there that I don't really need. And, but the bagged ground I usually take with me to church. So I, I buy coffee for the, for my parish and we mix black Bucky's coffee with uh cafe du monde chicory so our, our coffee machine's got two big pots on it the left side is the weaker one the right side has the 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 cafe du monde and uh, or other chicory um and coffee mixes as well and we mix that with the the Bucky's grounds and it works great and it's very thick and it's very strong coffee um, and it makes you feel very full, even if you haven't had food. Although I've noticed that um, both gas station, but also the bagged coffee grounds that you can buy at Bucky's, they have a tendency, like you can burn your coffee way quicker than others. But with cream and sugar, you can't go wrong if you like it. And if you've been to a Bucky's before, you've got all options, whether it's milk, whether it's whole milk or um, dairy-free options or the creamers, it's great. Uh, can't recommend it enough. It's that comfy, cozy vibe that everyone wants out of their out of their coffee and such that you you want to enjoy. But you're also there for the experience. And uh, I, I every time I go visit the doctors or I'm traveling or I go down to the cathedral in Dallas, uh, I make sure that uh, Bucky's coffee. Um, I, I always stop at Bucky's, even 
if I don't need anything. It's just nice to go to, even use their bathrooms, right? You know, it's the gas, it's the Chick fil A of gas stations. That's what you're there for. But both the gas station, uh, even their like dark roast stuff is pretty darn good, which I would recommend. But yeah, uh, Bucky's is high on my list. It's fantastic. I use their their coffee at church. It's it, it's a great decision. Highly recommend it. <clears throat> but we'll uh, we'll carry on. Uh, <clears throat> stocking mill coffee. So I I have only bought the blonde roast. That's why I have the little quote there at the top, uh, which is really strong. Like you really do not need to have anything else in there. I, I black. I normally that's how I drink my coffee. And it will, uh, it is going to just hit you like a sack of bricks. It's really strong coffee. It's really great stuff. Uh, I know I, I'm a, I, I hate the, the Black Rifle Coffee Company. I hate how they've like kitchified and it's ran by a former glowy and everything like that. So when people sell coffee, which seems to be a way that everyone and their mother makes money with YouTube, like Tim Cast does it, Adam Kreigler or whatever his name does it. Um, but I've bought stocking mill coffee before I'm mutuals with a guy that runs the Twitter account. Good guy. Uh, stocking mill coffee is pretty darn good. I'm a, I'm a fan. Can't go wrong with it. It's a good time overall. And it's definitely worth drinking it. I, I would think I have only had the blonde roast, which is it's light roast, which means it has the most caffeine out of any of the coffee that they've got there. And it's, it's pretty strong. It's pretty good. <clears throat> Excuse me. But yeah, yeah, no, I mean, I would, I would recommend that you, you patron non chains and alternative businesses. Like there was this, um, this little spat I saw on Twitter and I don't get into the, I don't, yeah. Grifter alert, right. Wait till neatocracy finds out. Uh, here's the difference, but like, this is the, the, the discourse I hate about grifters it is just that if I purchase something and I get something out of it and it does a good job at what I want it to be are you a grifter? I don't think so. Like mystery groves, like gonzo style of advertising when he was still mainly on Twitter where like people would, you know, get into the meme is, is that, Oh, you know, I, that's <laughs> like my favorite thing about mystery grove is when I bought always with honor in the Peter Kemp trilogy, he released my family to me unharmed. Like this gonzo style of like passive aggressive, violent marketing, but you're getting good books out of it. And I have every single book that Mystery Grove puts out. So, I mean, I, I, I can't call them grifters. And the same way I can't call Dissident Soaps a grifter. I mean, like, when they're posting pictures that, hey, I'm actually making the soap myself, I, I think that that's fine. Um, if, if it's a good product and service, I don't think there's a problem with that kind of advertising. I mean, Doug the Intern, who runs the OGC Twitter account, uh, also has the same gonzo style of advertising and marketing. And I think that that's perfectly fine. Um, the, the problem I do say with, uh, yeah, no, I think that's a good point. Westy is, is that, uh, that a lot of these coffee people don't actually grow the coffee themselves. I mean, that's the same issue I have with like Tim cast or whatever. It's like, we have our own coffee and I'm like, so you're just bagging coffee that you're buying from somewhere else. Um, not, not a fan, you know, also speaking of, of books and things like that, uh, Antelope Hill and them are having a sale today. So go enjoy that if you're willing to purchase books from them. But getting coffee at a cafe means drinking gay water. <laughs> uh, Sam Hyde has his own coffee. That I did not know. But yeah, I mean, we're, we're here We're here just judging and having a good time with diners and cozy stories and experiences. We're here for that gonzo style of advertising. Um, but yeah, stocking milk coffee is actually pretty good. I can personally vouch for it. Um, I, cause like, and I, and I feel bad cause like I'm on these sort of like online, I I'm like the, the, the really online person at my parish. Like no one really knows who I am. Although there is a gentleman who was, uh, he's not on, he doesn't have a, a, an account anymore, um, because he's in law school and he's taking time off away from making content. But, uh, my friend myth of the 20th century, uh, not myth of the 20th century, repeal the 20th century, sorry, repeal the 20th century. And he's got a really good interview with Scott Horton in the Transgender Industrial Complex. I think that's his name, right? And, uh, you know, he he also goes to my church every now and then He between his time here and at law school. And, you know, we're the only two really like overly online right-wing people and everyone else is kind of like normie. Uh, like when I first started going to my church, they're like, hey, we have this book club. And it was things like, you know, 12 Rules for Life and Live Not by Lies, which was fine, which was fine. 
but one of them had like a, a copy or, or a bag of Black Rifle Coffee Company. And I was like, how do I even remotely broach the subject of that? Um, and you do it very, you do it very, very diplomatically. And you explain that they're like anti Kyle Rittenhouse. And one of them is ran by a, a former intelligence agent that has uh, homosexual tendencies. Uh, yeah, Black Rifle Coffee Company must go. Black Rifle Coffee Company, Delenda Est, must be destroyed. But yeah, all Tim Pool products are repackaged, including his takes. So true. The only episodes of Tim Pool I have ever watched was the time he had uh, Nick Fuentes on and the twice where he's had Oren McIntyre on. I don't really care for Tim Pool or any of his stuff. But remember, guys, it's complicated. It's complicated. Not worth your time. He worked at Vice, apparently. Oh, Lord have mercy. Uh, apparently I've gotten not Omega on, on the, uh, thank I'll, I'll read your super chat later, but I just, that's, that's bagels are Polish. Apparently they're not Jewish. Um, post destruction of the temple. It's a cheap copy of a Christian invention. Well, there, there you go. There you go. Yeah. It's like the dads of coffee. It's really bad. Like it's just, it's dad chords, that kitschy, like vet bro kind of, uh, consumerism. And I hate it. But I, I can personally vouch for stocking milk coffee. Um, I, I've not had any of their other blends, although I've been told to investigate. So maybe over this time, uh, I'll go there. When Oren talked about lions and foxes, Tim Pool started talking about the Lion King. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. But again, the average Tim Cast stream gets like a million views. So the fact that Oren can talk to like a million people is still a thing, especially to... to the comment section were like, this Oren guy makes more sense than Tim Pool ever has. You know, that's when you, that's when you kind of want. Uh, Black Rifle's also anti-St. Michael. Well, there you go. Another good reason to hate, you know, Cuck Rifle Coffee Company. Uh, and then last but not least for today is uh, Burning Bush Roasters. Holy coffee. I buy the Monastery Blend. Um, <laughs> deracinated. Yeah, dad. That's definitely true. John Smith. Uh, so Burning Bush Coffee Roasters is one of the is the coffee um, that you can buy at St. Tecon's Monastery in Pennsylvania and you can order blends um, at any point in time as you so wish and so choose and it's actually really good coffee uh, I have the I have what's literally called quote the Monastery Blend that's what it's called and it has a a chocolate kind of fruity flavor to it um but prude, we know you aren't an actual frog. I, everyone knows I'm not an actual frog, and that's okay. But on the internet, no one knows you're a frog, and that's the nice part. But uh, yeah, no. So this is uh, this is money. This is coffee I personally buy and I use at home, and um, this is something that I support it. Uh, for those who don't know, I am an Orthodox Christian. Uh, I one day I do sincerely wish to retire from the online political stuff, lest I get hired somewhere to um go to seminary that's sort of a, a goal of my life but um you know uh anyways burning bush coffee roasters is great it's ran by the monastery and it's a great way to support the monastery as well if you're into that sort of deal um and literally the monastery blend is great it has the sort of fruity chocolatey undertone or really overtone if you have it black you can actually really taste the chocolate in it and it's kind of like this dark chocolate flavor that you can really appreciate it um, really affordable. It's really great. And it's, um, you know, that sort of, you are the ethic of care, very great stuff. Uh, so you're, you, you are the ethic of care when it comes to where you consume your money under capitalism. Uh, capitalism has a lot of problems, but at least I can vote with my wallet to some extent. And I go, um, I, I do this, which is that supporting, uh, the church in that respect. Uh, it's a very earthy, uh, flavor and it's a very good stuff in that respect. I quite enjoy it. Uh, we love our monastics, don't we, folks? So true. So true, Owen. We really do. And there are plenty. And if you're a Roman Catholic, there are dozens of monasteries in the United States that do have their own coffee. Uh, so if you wish to support a Roman church, I mean, there are plenty that you can look up. There's one. Um, there's a, a a place in Wyoming that is a, I think, Carmelite uh, Roman Catholic monastery, and they do their own kind of uh, coffee stuff there. So, yeah, I mean the quality is always there. Uh, and yeah, the Trappists do it as well. Right. So there you go. <laughs> Black rifle coffee companies for pineapple people. There you go. Um, but no, I mean, th this stuff's actually really good. And, uh, if you have milk and sugar with your coffee, which I would always prefer rather than cream, uh, just cause I'm a, a huge 
milk. Well, I'm not really a milk drinker on, although I am with whole milk, whole milk is fantastic. Um, you know, I always have milk with my coffee and as someone who has osteoporosis due to his anti-rejection medication, um, milk is something that I'm, I, I have a dispensation to not, you know, fast from, which is great, but yeah, milk in my coffee is great. And it really makes the chocolate pop out more when you buy burning bush coffee roasters. And I would highly recommend it. I'll probably put them in the description and the pinned comment as well in the chat as well. Um, as well, for those who are interested, highly recommend it really good stuff. But I think this is the last thing that I've got on for the list. And then we can have a, a little ranking and then I will get into everyone's super chats. Um, but I do want to sort of tell this story. So um, I have coffee with chicory all the time every Sunday. That's how we make our coffee uh, at my parish. And whole milk is a cheat code, I swear. That's very true. Um, and we're, we're also starting like a... Uh, a, a farmer's co-op in, in, in with my parish and the members in the greater community to farm and grow food and to, to drive and deliver food to other people. Because, I mean, religiosity is sort of the way that you can discriminate, but also serve your own people. Uh, and food security is a huge concern. So, I mean, you know, people who have ranches where I live, you know, we're, we're doing all these things because there's some guys that are kind of like me that kind of see the supply chain crisis as this ticking time bomb. And Food security is really important. So people that are growing and people that can drive and deliver food and things like that, um, that's what we're doing. But in, in my church, we have um, very thick, and I mean like very like Turkish coffee thick of, of coffee grounds with chicory in it. And it's very thick and packed in with the grounds and the filter. And it's done that way because uh, that was the coffee that Archbishop Dimitri of Blessed Memory would always like. And he's... Um, uh, and well, that man, that man is a saint in my book and he will be canonized one day, but uh, that's how he drank his coffee. So more or less the entire diocese of the South always serves coffee with chicory in it. And it's very thick in that respect. And it's fantastic. Uh, and overall, um, burning bush is also really great to have with chicory as well, but there are other blends I've been told that it does it goes better with chicory than not the monastery blend they do have a sale for a christmas blend i'm going to probably buy that this week and enjoy it um your your super chat support my coffee habit as well as my anti-rejection medication and it's out-of-pocket costs so your ongoing contributions are wonderful but yes um by all means go for it uh but now time for the rankings um, and the coffee that i enjoy the most and you've heard all these wonderful cozy stories but here we go so um Top 10 final rankings, starting at number 10, Dunkin' Donuts. It's the it's the worst coffee on here. I didn't put Mickey D's or anything. Although Mickey D's coffee, it's like $1.98, or it used to be even cheaper. And it, it, that'll do the job. And if you're a man that needs his coffee to get the uh, old gut running, then I would recommend McDonald's. But Dunkin' Donuts is the worst. IHOP coffee is just garbage, but I'm going to keep drinking that garbage anyway. Waffle House, Denny's at number 7. Penny's at number 6. Village Inn at number 5. Chick-fil-A at number 4. Bucky's at number 3. Stocking Mill Coffee at number two and Burning Bush Coffee Roasters at number one. And then, of course, if you're interested down below, you can always go to findmyfriends.net or to Mr. Prude's Wares at teespring.com. You can go find uh, several mugs like this with Frog of the Week, and which I'm going to start doing again. I'm going to start doing this as YouTube shorts. The Frog of the Week will be back alongside geopolitics in the future. Um, although I've been doing a long dive into McLuhan and Alfred Bion in sort of media ecology. So I we're, we're doing a lot of strange things over here, not to mention the big project of the Stalin's War series, um, to which I emailed uh, Sean McMeekin if I can get a hold of him. I haven't gotten a reply yet, but fingers crossed. But these are our final rankings for coffee. Um, you can go get a lovely coffee mug and support the frog man himself over here and enjoy it. I'm drinking out of my coffee mug as well. Fantastic stuff. But uh, on to your super chats. And we'll uh, we'll get to we'll just get right to it. I will stop sharing this real quick and say hello. <clears throat> Number one monster from any gas station. I don't really drink that stuff either. Um, was this whole stream an ad for Burning Bush Coffee? No, no. Although I would recommend people buy it. <laughs> uh, Although I, I do wish to record promos for the merch store and stuff like that. I, I, I have the lovely, lovely uh, Digital Archipelago shirts that our good friend Mike of Pole and a few others have bought from. And uh, actually, while we're here, screw it. I'm just going to have that on, on the side while y'all uh, 
while y'all are here, um, people make these lovely little, uh, uh, th these great stuff. So here's, here's one. Um, I'll, I'll share that tab and then I'll just go through the super chats while I talk to you guys. <laughs> Got to get your sip on like, uh, what's his name? Uh, Scott Adams, right? There you go. So there you go. Uh, the link will be down below in the description uh, when I update the, the store and things like that. But anyways, uh, on to the Super Chats. So um, the first one is uh, from Sam153 for $5 US. He says, have I ever tried Tim Hortons coffee? Uh, no, I've never actually been to a Tim Hortons. And I've never been to a... I've, I've never been to Canada. So there you go. I've never been to, I've never been to Tim Hortons. I've never been... Uh, I've never, I've never been to a Tim Hortons. I've been to a Wawa's, which was pretty good. Not going to lie. I enjoyed a Wawa's. It was nice. And, but I've never been to Tim Hortons and I've never been to Canada either. So I apologize to my Canadian friends and brethren, but no, I've never been there. Uh, let's see here. Yeah. Not Omegan for $3 US. His bagels are Polish, not Jewish. As with most, as with most things after the destruction of the temple, it's a cheap copy of a Christian invention. Well, there you go. I guess I'll have to look into the history of uh, of bagels. And then Belial Bradley for $15 US. Thank you so much, sir. Um, $15 for when you come up to Ontario and see Geo and go out to a Tim Hortons for tea, a proper drink. Well, like I said, it just depends on what kind of tea it is and I can I can enjoy. Um but yeah, if I ever go to if I ever go to Canada or go visit Geo up in Canada, I might I'll have to take up on that offer. Uh, I appreciate that. So now on to the, the YouTube super chats. But again, I highly recommend that you use Entropy rather than uh, the YouTube Super Chats. That's good questions. Uh, let's see. Micah Pohl for $20 US. He says, thank you so much. He says, I'm excited for uh, coffee bonus review number 11, the Double R Diner. Uh, yeah, I, I do want to talk with last things about uh, Twin Peaks. It's one of my favorite television shows of all time. Big fan. Um. New Glaw for $5 asks, what are my thoughts on strong town slash not just bikes? They are kind of shit libby, but make, they make some good points. I actually don't know anything about this. So I'm going to have to go look. Is, is this a Twitter account or not just bikes? I'm just looking it up. Oh, it's the YouTube channel. One plus one million followers. Canadian John, Jason Slaughter. City design and urban development. Um... No, I, I don't know anything about them. I guess I'd have to watch a few videos. Although urban planning is something I love listening to conversations about because it's one of those subject matters I know nothing about, which is why I don't really talk about urban planning or urban development or architecture for that matter. Although I love Art Deco. Uh, I'll, I'll have to watch some of their videos and, and listen to them. I mean, if there's any recommendations that you can give in the chat, I'd greatly appreciate that. That way I have a clue of what to look for. Um, scribe 8762. Hello, scribe. Good to see you here for $5. He asks, uh, do the H E B cafe au lait tier list next. I don't think I'm going to do this very often. Maybe this will be like a, a once a quarter treat where I, I do something that's a little more cozy with restaurants and things, but I don't know. But again, I don't live near an H E B like the nearest H E B for me is like over an hour away and I'd have to, and like it's brand new. So, uh, one of these days, I'll just have to go and talk about my quote unquote HEB experience. You know, I, I just assume it's Trader Joe's for Texans. I, I, I know nothing about it. It's just Trader Joe's for Texans. Um, yeah, I made that super chat when you're talking about third places. Okay, check. Yeah, I think it should be capitalized by the distant right. <laughs> Make a pie tier list. Well, maybe. Um, but we'll, we'll we'll carry on, and I'm gonna have to. Tell my friend T.R. Hudson to not talk to me because he's trying to call me while I'm live on the air. That that screwball. Uh, and then Luthemplar for $20 US. Well, thank you so much, sir. Uh, he says, the budget cafes aren't happy with me. That's okay. I'll keep drinking that garbage. That's that's me with IHOP coffee. I'll keep drinking that garbage. Fast casual chain, tier list, Chili's, Applebee's, TGI Fridays. Is TGI Fridays still around? Like, Does that thing still exist? Like my only exposure to a TGI Fridays was that when I lived on post as a kid, when I, when my dad was still in the army, there used to be a TGI Fridays restaurant on post and it was not great. And it eventually got shut down for a coffee chain. And like one half of it got turned into like a more adult, you know, oriented restaurant and less casual dining. So I have no idea. 
um, if TGI Fridays is still around. But yes, I will keep drinking that that coffee chain garbage. That's for that's for that's for certain. I'm refresh entropy real quick, and we're good there. Fantastic. <clears throat> I believe they do. Yeah, I I have not been. I don't even know where the nearest TGI Fridays to me is. Like this is the thing. If I were to plan out something like this, you all would have to uh, um, seriously do. Uh, do it whether it is is there a thing between art deco and being on the right i love it and mr d also approves what's the connection i don't know it's art deco is associated i guess with like the roaring 20s the turn of the century this sort of optimism of the 20th century before it all comes crashing down in the midst of depression and world wars and uh, you know what comes after 1945 it's oldish but it still has a a uniquely western Eric and vitalism to it, which I quite appreciate, even to a point where the public works projects of FDR have Art Deco to them. Like, I mean, if you if you see the carvings of these sort of angelic figures of the Hoover Dam, you see this Art Deco kind of, a, you know, look on them. And it's it's amazing. You know, it's it's got it has energy to it. It, it says that we are a people that can build things and you don't have that anymore. Um, I mean, like the Art Deco designs of American Rail was beautiful. Um, and if you want to see a really weird, uh, it's yeah, it's an optimistic architecture, absolutely. But like, if you want to see a really weird little Dark Age edit, there is the American Rail Club, which is like this large sort of uh, association for just rail line uh, appreciators, and it's about American infrastructure and it's about American Rail. And it's a little dark age edit. And you're like, oh, this is really good. <laughs> it's for and it's for trains and rail lines in America. It's, it's really great. Um, yeah, Kate J, I would agree with that. It's, it's definitely one of the last great forms of American art styles. Absolutely. Uh, well, this was actually a lot of fun. Uh, I'm not going to lie to you. This was really enjoyable. This was a lot of fun. Uh, something a little different. Talking about coffee, talking about chains, talking about cozy experiences out on the road and traveling. Uh, tomorrow, we will have the Digital Archipelago, of course. I'll be recording three episodes of the Stalin's War series Thursday night, Friday night, and Monday night with my friends uh, Nicholas Sorokin, Charlemagne, and Pete Quinones is coming on for a chapter, and it's going to be uh, a really spicy uh, episode for sure. So um, if you want to see those episodes early, I do highly recommend that you subscribe as a channel member, a patron over on Subscribestar, or uh, via Substack. So. Um, I'll do that. Yeah, well, I'll do it when Orin isn't streaming next time. Well, I, I can't always, uh, I got my own schedule. He got his own, you know, you'll, you'll just have to have a good time, but of course there's always the VOD. So until then, ladies and gents, I'll see you all next time. I'll see you tomorrow, uh, around the same time with the digital archipelago. And until then, uh, God bless, take care and be prudent. Everyone have fun.